Hello again, guys. Uh, today we're going to take a look at inverse proportions. All right. Um, as its name implies, inverse, whenever we've talked about inverse, it's kind of been the opposite. So let's look at our definition. Um, basically, if you'll recall, let me go back um, and re refresh your memory. Uh, we talked about direct proportions. If you'll recall there, what happened in one side, if um, a quantity was increased or decreased, it had the same effect on the other, because that was a direct proportion. So now we're looking at inverse proportions. So in your head, you're, you hear inverse, you should start thinking opposite. So what that means is when I increase or decrease one quantity, it's going to cause the other quantity to have a different, um, the, the opposite effect. So if, it, if one decreases, the other should increase. If one increases, the other should decrease. They're opposites or they're inverse of each other. So for example, um, here's a problem that I've given you. So it takes a group of four se seventh graders half an hour to wash 10 cars. So how long would it take a group of eight seventh graders to wash 10 cars? So in a direct proportion, um, you would know how to set it up. However, if you think about this one logically, I have more children. Should it take them more time? No, I have more kids working, so it should take them less time. If we discount the fact that they're seventh graders and they probably got distracted talking, goofing off, and spraying each other with the hose. We're pretending that these ones are hardworking ones who were focusing on the car and not goofing off. Don't be offended. I love you all. Uh, so we know that it should take less time for eight of them to do it because I've got more kids working on it. So I'm just writing down what I have. I know that it took four kids 30 minutes. How long is it going to take eight kids is what I'm asking. Well, I know that if I set this up the way I've been setting them up, I'm going to wind up with a wrong answer um, because what's going to happen is um, I'm going to wind up with a bigger answer, and that's not what I'm looking for. So this one we have to think through a little more. You have to think about how to set it up, and I'm not going to lie to you, I have to stop and think about inverse proportions to make sure that I set them up as well, um, set them up properly as well. So what you want to think about here is in terms of more or less, okay? Um, if you keep that straight in your head, you should set it up properly. So if we think about this, um, more time, uh, and you'll notice I tried to color code this. It takes uh, less kids more time. So you'll notice that they're not across from each other like they have been. They're, um, they're basically um, in a diagonal, or they're going to be cross multiplied. So the more time, it, it takes less kids more time, whereas if I have more kids, it takes less time. However, you'll notice the greater still winds up on the top, the smaller still winds up on the bottom. But I'm not lining everything up the way that I've been trying to drill into your head to do when we talked about direct proportion, similarity, um, scale, and indirect measurements. All of those, we're using direct proportions. We're setting everything up so that it's um, across from each other uh, the way that uh, it should be. Here we're talking about inverse, which basically means I now need to flip-flop my thinking. Okay? So uh, here I'm going to wind up setting them across from each other instead. So uh, 30 minutes is my longer amount of time because it took four kids more time. So the less time would go down here. Well, it takes eight kids less time. So the more, more children should go on top, less children should go on bottom. Once we have it set up, then it's just going back and solving proportions the way we've been doing it using our cross product rule. So again, the big thing, it comes down to making sure we've set it up properly. So once we've set it up, we get um, eight times X and 30 times four. Uh, when I solve for it, I find that it should take 15 minutes. So then you want to go back and your 15 minutes is less than 30. So that makes sense because it should take more kids less time. If we wound up with a bigger number, say 60, we would have known that we did it wrong or backwards because think about it logically. It should not take more kids more time to wash the same amount of cars. It should take them less time. Okay? So we're going to um, do a few more of these here. Um, and again, these generally come at you in word problems. Okay, so Jane walks three miles on the treadmill every night. Um, and what you'll notice is there's usually some information that you don't necessarily need when you're setting up your inverse proportions. For example, the distance she walks isn't going to make a difference to how I'm going to solve this problem. That's just telling me that she's going the same distance regardless. Okay, so um, inverse proportions, we're talking about um, dealing with the same amount of some things. For example, we still had ten cars in that first problem, even though there was more kids. So here we're still dealing with the same distance. The only thing that's going to change is how fast she's going to walk it. Um, so if she walks at a rate of three miles per hour, it takes her one hour. So if she increases her pace to four miles per hour, how long would it take? Uh, it would it take? 
So if you think about it, she's walking faster if she takes less time to go the same distance. So again, we want to think about that. So um, it takes, so we want to put less time over more time. So then this would be, I'm going to call it less rate, which is not proper grammar, but that's okay. The, the slower rate over, um, and I'm going to say more again, just because I did less and more over here. Um, the greater rate, okay? So ignore the fact that it's terrible grammar. I just want to stick with the same words, less and more, okay? So the more time would be the one hour because it took her one hour when she was going three miles per hour, okay? So she wants to speed up to four miles per hour, which should take less time, which is what I'm solving for, okay? So I write it out like this in words so that I can get a clear picture and then just plug it in here. Because otherwise, um, even uh, even I get confused, and I've been doing math a lot longer than you guys have. Okay, so from here we can go about solving it. Four times x, three times one is three. So when I uh, divide, we could change this into a decimal if you like. I'll leave it as a fraction. I get three quarters of an hour. So basically, 45 minutes. Um, and if we wanted, we could have said 60 minutes, and then we could have done it in minutes instead of hours. That doesn't really make a difference. So three quarters of an hour to go four miles. Now that is less time because she's moving faster, so that makes sense. So we want to think about, does it logically make sense? Think through your answer and look at it and be like, okay, yeah, that sounds about right. Okay, uh, so here, if I drive at a rate of 50 miles per hour, it takes me one and a half hours to go 75 miles. How long will that same trip take if I drive at a rate of 40 miles per hour. So again here, you'll notice, here's a number we're not going to use. This is just telling me I'm going the same distance. The only variable that's changing is my rate of speed, okay? So again, think of it this way. Um, it takes less time if I'm driving faster. It takes more time if I'm driving slower. So it's always backwards, but if you look at it this way, Sorry, I didn't write time. Less time, less speed. Slower means less speed. More time, more speed. All right, so it's just the way to think of it. And I always do it this way first to stop and think through it to make sure I have it right before I start plugging in numbers. So um, my faster rate of speed was 50 miles per hour. The slower rate of speed is 40 miles per hour. I don't know how long it takes with 40 miles per hour, but it should take me longer because it's slower. At 50, it took me 1.5 hours, which would be the faster time because I'm moving at a faster rate, okay? Um, and so if I do this, I get 40x is equal to 75. And then when I solve for x, I'm going to get 1.875 hours, okay? And this takes, uh, this is the higher number and it should take me more time because I'm going slower, okay? So always just think that through. Um, should it take me more time? Should it take me less time? Just double check my math, yes. Okay, so it's all about making sure we set it up properly when we're doing inverse. Um, and the thing you'll notice is that instead of setting them up across from each other, um, like we normally did, we're kind of setting them up on diagonals now. So if you can remember that, however you can remember it, to flip-flop your thinking when we do inverse. A couple more here. All right, it takes Kyle 45 minutes to shovel his driveway. Uh, if two friends come to help him, how long will it take? So here you'll notice they didn't give us an extra, any extra um, distance information. His driveway is the same distance no matter what. I didn't give you the, um, the distance like I did in some of the problems. So don't let the extra information throw you off because sometimes kids want to throw that in there because they're like, there's another number in the problem. Sometimes there's information you don't need. You need to learn how to filter that out and just look at what it is that you do need. All right, so it takes Kyle... 45 minutes. So he's one kid and it takes him 45 minutes. So we think about how we're going to set this up. Um, here I have less kids or I could have more kids. If I have more kids, it's going to take less time. If I have less kids, it's going to take more time. 
Okay, so it, the reason I set it up like this is because this is a little more traditionally um, like setting up the direct one, and then you figure out where to plug it in. Because you'll notice it's less is across from less, more is across from more. Which is why I always write it this way, then try to plug them in so I don't get confused. Um, so less kids would be the one child that it took, which was Kyle. Now, he invites two friends over, which means two friends plus himself. So the more kids would be three kids going at it. Um, it takes the less time. We don't know what that is. That's how long it'll take with the three kids. The more, the, the more time uh, is the 45 minutes it took the one child. And again, just forgive any bad grammar in this. It's because I'm sticking with the more and the less words. Sorry. So here I get 3x is equal to 45. x is equal to 15 minutes. So it should take three kids only 15 minutes to do the same amount of work that it took one child um, 45 minutes to do. Inverse proportions. All right. Uh, so here we're talking about kids again. So, uh, sorry, let me just randomly start. I, I can only talk and write so many times before I start messing up. Less kids over more kids. Kids, not kiss is going to be equal to less time over more time. So I always go through, think about that first, then plug my numbers in. So it takes 14 girls 0.8 hours to deliver the daily newspaper. How long will it take if only four girls deliver the papers? So the less children would be the four girls, the more kids would be the 14 girls. It's going to take 14 girls less time, and it told us that the 14 girls only took 0.8 hours. It's going to take four girls more time, which is what I'm trying to figure out how long it's going to take. So from here, I get uh, 4x is equal to 14 times 0.8, 11.2, and this is going to not work out evenly, but that's okay. 2.8. So it should take them 2.8 hours because there's only four of them. So it should take them longer than it took when there were 14. So again, I can go back and I can think logically about it. Does that make sense? Yes, it should take longer if there were less girls doing it. All right, so again, um, as I've been saying and reiterating over and over, uh, which probably means it's important, uh, it's all in how you set it up. Really think these ones through us. Especially these ones because they're very complex. Even I can get confused on them if I don't take the time to think it through and set it up this way. All right. Uh, if you have questions, please rewatch the video. Um, you can always post them in the comments, email me, or ask me in class. Have a great night, guys.